back to Sharon Cullen Art. It's been a couple weeks since I've been in front of the camera, so I just wanted to say a quick hello and show you a couple items that I got in the mail. Um, there were two things that I've been wanting to buy. One of them was a book, and another one is a little surprise that I have not opened yet. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And um, those of you who are following me on Instagram have been concerned about the smoke here. You can even see through my window. I don't know if you can tell. It looks kind of foggy outside. That is from the smoke. But we're all doing fine. Everything's fine. And for those of you who don't live in the U.S., there are hundreds of miles from one side of the lake where I'm at to the other for Canada. I think it's about 150 miles from on the due east. Maybe not quite that long. Maybe 50 miles. But anyway, there's a lot of miles. And down toward Detroit, if the wildfires, I'm going to do it so that you can see in your, I'll do it backwards. If the wildfires keep heading down to the eastern portion of Ontario, like where Toronto is, um, when it starts to get down there, it can cross over into the Detroit area if it could, if sparks were blowing across the river. But even with the river, we're talking about it's about an eighth of a mile wide, the Detroit River, and then there's other areas that are um, rivers as well. We've got a lot of rivers that kind of link the lakes together, and Canada is surrounding Michigan on three sides. So um, I know it's a little bit confusing, but that's how it is, and we're fine here. It's just the smoke that's blowing that's making it difficult. And I need to get a scissor because this is not going to open this. <laughs> okay. I'm back now. So anyway, things are going well here. I've been taking some rests and trying to get my step count down to a reasonable level. Uh, there's a couple of you who follow me with AS, ankylosing spondylitis, or axial spondyloarthritis is another way to say it, um, which is the auto-inflammatory disease that I have. And um, anyway, you were worried about my steps and how, how much work I was doing, and it was a killer. Shh, Diesel. He's got this anxious whine that he does. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, I was up to about 14,000 steps a day, which is extremely far past my pain quota for the day. If I hit 6,000 in a day, I'm, I'm usually in pain at night. So... Today, I spent time at my sister's house. She just came up north. My sister and brother-in-law, they have a house across the street. And I'm at about 4,100. So I'm feeling much better today. And uh, I'm going to get this box open one of these times. But anyway, what I've been doing is taking a box, un doing a little unpacking. Then I take a rest. Doing a box, take a rest. Pack got more shelves up for me, closet rods up, so I can... Um, you want the bubble wrap? You want to pop the bubbles? There you go. <laughs> you want to pop the bubbles. So um, I can do more unpacking now. I didn't have closet rods to even hang clothes on before. So anyway, this is my little little uh, thing that I found on Amazon. I ran across it, and I wanted to try it. You know it recommends things for you sometimes. Well, this is a pen. It's a dual pen. Where's the lid to the pen? Oh, it's on there. <laughs> it's one of these shorties, but it gets long. I'll show you. And it has two tips. Oh, wait, where's the other tip? Maybe I bought the wrong thing. Well, it's a fountain pen. But what I was hoping for was a glass pen. It was a glass dip pen, and I thought it was so cool. But anyway, this is one of these. Oh, it, it's already on there. See? It's a glass dip pen. And you can take the cap. And there's actually a um, screw-on edge back here. So that it makes it a good length for you to, to write with. So you can either pull this out. It pops right out. I'm not going to do it now and fling it across the room. And then you can put your other your other thing in, your fountain fountain pen nib in. And it looks like it's one of those 
pull type of chamber filling devices and it looks like it's a fine tip. But anyway, I wanted to try this because I'd love to be out and about and use a glass dip pen, but I'm afraid to take my glass dip pen out because it'll break so easily. So now that I have this, I can take it with me. And um, I don't know if any of you have this, but I saw this and just thought, oh, is that cool? So now I can put it right in my art toolkit, which I use almost daily, you guys. I have to update you on that review. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, let me grab it. It's right over here. I had to grab my water, too. I'm so thirsty. Must be all the smoke. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is the art toolkit, and Expeditionary Art sells it on her Etsy shop and also on her website. So if you're buying this, I would suggest, now she won't do this, but I would suggest that you buy it on her website, expeditionaryart.com, I believe it is. Anyway, if, you, and if, you, if that's not correct, you can Google Expeditionary Art and it'll take you to her webpage. And um, that way she doesn't have to pay Etsy any money out of her sales if you buy it directly from her. So anyway, this little thing that's hanging on it, I just hung on there. Excuse my dog, I'm so sorry you guys. Shh, Diesel, enough. And um, anyway, this art toolkit is everything that you need to take with you. I have extra things in here as well. Um, it comes with a lot of goodies, including these little clips, a water brush, um, a ruler, uh, what else? Oh, it comes with a Sharpie, which I ruined because I put it on wet paint. Big mistake. Um, and you know how that ruins them. Comes with a little syringe so that you can refill your water brush. Comes with a little water bottle for your wetting your paints. And then I just added a couple pens in. I have my ballpoint pen, my um, Faber-Castell, but the ink I don't like as much on the Faber-Castell ink. When I replace it, I think I'll get a different one. But I love my Kaweco Sport, that one. I love, love, love. That's a ballpoint. I have a um, fountain pen too, but this is a ballpoint, and I really love it. It's the Kaweco Sport, and uh, they have different styles that you can get, and then I just bought the gold clip to go on it. Uh, then I have a large eraser here. This is my favorite eraser that I use all the time. I like the white erasers better than gummy erasers. I feel like they pick up a little bit better. And then I have my small palette of paints. You can fit a big palette of paint in here. I just have this in here because I use that a lot when I'm traveling. Uh, it's double-sided. This was not the one that comes with her kit. But she is sending me one very soon, a new one that she has coming out. And when I get that, I will show it to you. Um, and then also in it comes a Moleskine. Uh, what are these? Travel journals, watercolor journals. And I just started writing in it today. Um, and I was doing some of my supplies that I had laying out, and I'm gonna to continue to do that. Um, Here I will put a um, quote of some sort on the first page as well. So that's, that's that, but I wanted to show that to you and uh, tell you I am using this. I don't normally buy moleskines. I'm not real um, happy with the moleskine. Compared to the Pentalic Aqua Journal, their pages are much heavier. Uh, they feel like thick cardboard after looking at a moleskine because the moleskine paper is very thin. On to the other thing I wanted to show you. <clears throat> I'm going to just put this pen away and stick this over it so that I don't lose what I got here. But I thought that pen was really cool. I'm going to try it out and I'll let you know how it works. The other thing I got is a book that I've been wanting for a long time. Um, and I've been wanting to buy it, and I'm not sure if I have it on Kindle or not. I don't think I do. I bought the hardcover. This is called Botany for the Artist, and an inspirational guide to drawing plants, and it's by Sarah Simblet, and it looks like this. And it's been out for many years. Uh, I've seen it multiple times coming up on my Kindle 
page, or not my Kindle page, my Amazon page. Oh, the photography in this is beautiful. I'm looking for the copyright 2010. So it's been around for a while. I just wanted to show you this book from a different viewpoint. So a couple days have passed and I've had a chance to read a little bit in the book and um, I can tell you a little bit more about it. Like I said, this book did not come with a jacket and which is kind of a bummer because I already see rubbing, but that's okay. It's just a book. Um, her inside cover is really cute too with her drawings. But the photography in this book is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'll just give a shout out to the photographer, Sam Scott Hunter, and the botanical advisor, Stephen Harris. He was, I don't know if he's a botanist or what, who helped her with this, but she did all the drawing and the writing. Um, the contents show several chapters, the art of botany, drawing plants, diversity, roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits, cones, and seeds. Diversity, she's talking about plant classification, algaes versus fungi and lichens versus ferns and conifers and flowering plants and all of that. But um, I've tagged a few sections here, but first of all, I wanted to show you her beautiful work. It is so gorgeous. I'm going to bring this book up to show you close up the level of skill that this woman has. She's such a great artist, just beautiful. She uses a dip pen and um, ink, some diluted ink, etc. cetera. Uh, here's some more beautiful photography. There was, I don't know if I showed you this picture right up front that was so beautiful. I don't know if it's right in the beginning. Yeah, this one. It's just gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Um, but anyway, moving on here, I just wanted to show you her um, way of mark making. She shows her style of hatching and cross hatching in her book. And the detail on that is really good as well. I'll zoom in here so that you can see this a little bit closer. Her detail for her leaves, for instance, how she brings her hatching up this way, then she cross hatches and brings it down this way. She pauses, adds another area on for the curve of the leaf and then coming out again. She also does that, oops, I'm sorry for the shaking. She also does this over here. She calls this energized strokes. I can get my camera to sit still. And parallel lines versus jagged lines and using the paper, how she uses the white of the paper in part of every image, which is important too in watercolor. Let me zoom back out again. But uh, go down to where I can get the whole book pretty much. That will work. Without zooming out all the way. Uh, she also goes into colors, mixing colors. You don't need a lot of colors. Your primaries, maybe some secondaries if you want to take an extra uh, bit. Six colors is all you need. She talks about preparing for her drawings and how she does that. Using circles and stuff like that. Here's some more beautiful, beautiful sketching. I wanted to show you this plant here that I thought was really cool. It seems to me I've seen something like this somewhere before. It's a forest vine, aerial roots sprouting from the stem of a tropical forest vine, gripping the painted wall of the glass house to enable the vine to climb. Some of this plant's aerial roots also hang free, free in the air. Old leaves that have fallen away from the green stem have left pale bands called leaf scars. Interesting. But she tells stories, too, and I wanted to show you something that she wrote. Here she shows she did this drawing over an entire day. It took her from morning until dusk to do this, as well as some of the other trees that are in the book. She did them all in one day, all with a dip pen. But the way she tells stories in her writing is amazing. So I just wanted to read one little portion here. It says, hours spent drawing in the open landscape are a gift. Drawing gives us time to stay still, be focused, see the complex. Okay. Um, 
It says here, wind snatches all unguarded paper, rain spits unseen on the page, and as the pen nib cuts through an invisible droplet, a tiny flood of water completely shifts the shape and meaning of the mark. Insects flick yellow stains, birds and larger ones, and as yet another stumbling ground beetle takes a wrong turn into your boot, ants lay claim to where you are seated. And then she says, for one week in April, from early morning till dusk, and faced with a tide of rapidly unfurling spring leaves, I worked swiftly to draw all the trees in this book. So it was over a week. But anyway, uh, she talks about how she, in just one day, she watched the leaves open on this oak tree. And then there was another one, she said on page 91, that she also drew and she watched this one open as well. Now she doesn't picture any of it, but she was sitting for so long that she watched it open. <laughs> Pretty wild. She always draws from life. Here are some of the wild stems that she's drawn. I recommend this book highly. It's really a beautiful book. There's not an enormous amount of instructions. She gives you the basics. So if you're a little intimidated by getting started in it, um, she gives the basics on it. And it is really informative. She talks about outlining the composition first before going in. Um, here she has a couple pages addressing composition and how she does that, framing her landscape using contrasts and size, distance and space, and light effects. You want shadow and light. Um, and then how she can also adapt to composition. That here she says a conifer was drawn twice on the same size sheet of paper. Once on the left, it stands alone, and the other, it has been centered with another one behind it. So she talks about how she does that, contrasting in size. Here are people, and then she's got these tall trees to give you the, the depth and the height of these trees in the distance. Uh, but anyway, the book goes on from there. Here she shows all of her colors that she used in making this um, kohlrabi, whatever that is. I'm not familiar with some of these plants. Looks like she traveled a lot. Look at this beautiful Venus flytrap. These photography Photos are just beautiful. Now, if you were to get this book and you wanted to copy some of this, it's one thing to copy and practice. It's another to sell that work um, or display it as your own work. You don't want to do that because you're using some other artist's information and that's not, that's not good. And you could get sued over something like that if an artist wanted to go after you. Um, here, using toned paper, she used white ink and black ink, which is very pretty. Maybe that's pencil. Could be pencil because there's some shininess to it. And with pencils also, um, there's only one pencil out there that I know of on the market that does not provide um, a shininess to the graphite. And I believe this is the, it's the Mars Lumograph that is such a nice pencil. Part of the reason that I like them so much because you can get pencil lines to disappear with your work. Um, this is beautiful here, these leaves, how she painted those. But anyway, I do recommend this book, even just for the pictures. <laughs> if nothing else, it could be a coffee table book. It is a beautiful book, and she does teach quite a bit of information, but it's not an in-depth tutorial if that's what you're looking for. I wouldn't call this a beginner book. It would be more of an intermediate to advanced book, I would say. So um, Botany for the Artist by Sarah Simblett, an inspirational guide to drawing plants. Go and, go and get it. It's really a nice book. And it's not too expensive either. I found it on Amazon. So go check it out. Uh, remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon. Most of all, be kind to each other. And I'll be back soon, I hope. I'm in a rut. I can't think of what to paint at all. Got, I, I need to get out in my car and go plenty of paint. And I think I'm going to do that, but I'm not sure.
sure that I'm going to record it because it is so much work to record when I'm plein air painting. Um, I'll see what I can do though. Maybe I will. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, take care everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.